We've explained the test procedure and what can cause readings to vary. The other thing we need to consider is when ring final circuits have bridges or interconnections and how this will affect readings. Here's our diagram of a normal ring final circuit. A bridge would be a connection which might do this. So bridging from one side to the other, usually supplying one or more socket outlets on the way. This effectively creates a parallel resistance path, so will cause lower resistance readings for the entire ring than you would get for a standard ring circuit. An interconnection could only involve part of a circuit, like this. So again, it provides a parallel resistance, but not involving so much of the circuit. Because the resistance is a parallel one, it's very difficult to determine whether a bridge or interconnection exists by measurement alone. But if you can estimate the length of the circuit, you can calculate the expected resistance. And if you consistently get much lower readings than this, then it's reasonable to expect there may be a bridge or interconnection. You won't see bridges and interconnections ruled out specifically in the regulations. But the requirements of regulation 433.1.5 need to be met. One of these is that the load current in any part of the circuit is unlikely to exceed, for long periods, the current carrying capacity of the cable. And it's quite possible, in a poorly installed ring circuit with bridges or interconnections, that multiple heavy loads could cause an increased current on specific parts of the circuit. So, bridges and interconnections should be avoided. In this video, we focused on ring final circuit continuity testing. It is one of the more complex series of tests to undertake and understand, but I hope that this video has helped improve your knowledge. See you soon.